life. We start life knowing nothing. As we grow, we learn. But what have we truly learned? And are we willing to learn new things? Are we willing to leave behind what we once knew in order to follow the truth of God? Jesus has called his followers to come and learn from him. Life is one big teachable moment. Well, good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you today. Joanne, that was a great greeting. I appreciate that. Good to see you. Sorry to call you out. That probably made you uncomfortable, but that was very friendly this morning. Uh, welcome everyone watching at home. Uh, we're so thankful for both our in-person campuses and our online campuses. And we're really uh, overwhelmingly thankful for all who make that happen, our staff and volunteers and all of you, because it wouldn't be church without you. Today, as we're in our series, Teachable Moments, it's called We're Not Alone. That's the title of our message. And we're going to talk about the fact that uh, as God has sent His Son Jesus to save us and then to transform us, He doesn't send us out to do that alone. He gives us the Holy Spirit, our great helper and guide to be with us and in us. And today we're going to talk about how we can have the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life and how we can grow in the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Anybody in this room or online want more of the Holy Spirit's power in their life? Anybody here? You can raise hands, say hallelujah, amen, do some jumping jacks, whatever you got to do. All right, up in the balcony, I see you. All right, so you want, we want more of the Holy Spirit's power in our life. So we're all in agreement there. So let's stand. We're going to read God's Word together here this morning. If you're lucky, it'll still be morning when I'm done. Anyways. We're in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 18 today, and I want to read this out loud here together. If you love me, keep my commands. You can read with me, nice and loud. You get masks on, so I can't hear you. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. It's the most comforting line in those five verses there. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this place where we can gather uh, through technology and in person. And Holy Spirit, right now, as we study who you are and your role in our life, Holy Spirit, we ask you to do a work right in this place. Sweep through our, uh, this place and in our hearts may uh, change us uh, through your word here today, right in this place. I pray for those who are seeking you, who have yet to give their life to you. I pray that today would be the day that they open themselves up to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> so a few things as we jump in. We're in this Teachable Moment series. We're learning a, a new to us Bible study method called Discovery Bible Study. And we're doing that a few places. So we're using that as an outline in our messages every weekend. We're also doing a daily reading, which you can find online, uh, and we're, this week we'll be studying the Holy Spirit in all of our daily readings, and it also follows that guide for personal study. And in your community groups, we are also following that same pattern, and we'll be talking in our community groups this week about the Holy Spirit. If you're not in a community group, there's still uh, room in many of them. And you can go to our website and go up to that little hamburger and you can find your way to a community group and you email us and we'll get you plugged in. If God's been leading you to maybe lead a community group, we have a process for that as well. And you can email the church or fill out the connect card on our homepage and they will, um, they will tell you uh, how to do that. So uh, just look for those things. And lastly, Last fall, those of you that are here, you'll remember, we had an eight-week series called Phil that was all about the Holy Spirit. So if you want to learn more about the Holy Spirit, there's all kinds of ways to do that. You can find those messages on demand on our website uh, and on YouTube and on, and on Facebook if you really scroll back. Uh, but whatever platform you're on or podcast, just put in Christ Community Church East Taunton, because there's a lot of us unaffiliated. Uh, but you can find us there and find that content. So there are lots of ways to engage with this material that we're giving you and grow uh, in your understanding and wisdom of God. Uh, it's like a buffet. It's a spiritual buffet, right? And we all know if we, 
if we go to the spiritual buffet, we get full and then we get a, get a little, little heavy too. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, uh, but that is all there for you. So we're asking three questions in our Bible study method. And I'm going to quiz you guys because I want to know if you know the three questions yet. Right? Last service got it, just so you know. So they got it. Let's see if this service gets it. And at home, you can type it in as I ask. So the first question, number one, is what? All right, you got one for one. The second question is, why? A balcony, why does it? Okay, you guys, I'll give it to you. All right, and then uh, the, the third question is, is what? What will I do? Or how will I respond, right? Because we're reading God's Word and looking at what it says, and then we're talking about why it matters. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then from that, we need to do something with it, right? we got to respond to what we learn. So those are the three questions. So let's answer that first question in our message here today. What does our passage actually say? So I see five statements that it makes uh, in those verses. And the first one is, if you love me, keep my commandments. Would you agree that this, this book right here says those things, right? I'm not asking you to agree with it. I'm just asking you to agree that it says that. When we study the Word of God, that's where we're going to start. The second thing it says is, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Do you guys agree that the, the passage says that? Anybody with me? You can respond verbally if you'd like. Thank you. Um, and then the next statement it says is, the world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him or knows Him, but you, or knows Him, right? And then the uh, fourth thing it says is, that you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. We're going to spend most of our time looking at that statement. And then number five says this, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. It's how powerful of a thought is that, that we're not alone, that God is with us. And as we think about that, what does it say? Then we ask those secondary questions. When we read the Word of God, we have to ask ourselves that secondary question of what does it say about God or the Holy Spirit or Jesus? In this case, all three but some things that we can see that it says about God. The first part is, is that God is present. He's not some far off God. He's not some God on a shelf, but he is here and he is present. And not only is he present, he's not just like in the next room of the house. He's also a relatable God. He wants to be in relationship. He's relational in his nature. Uh, so when we think about that, he's not a far off God. He's present and he's relational. We see that here um, as Jesus talks. And then we also, too, see that He is the Spirit of truth, that, that we're looking for truth in life and truth about the world and all of those type of things. He is actually truth. He's the source of truth. So that part is something that we really need to see that it says. And then, most importantly, this is one of the passages in Scripture where we see all three members of the Trinity. See, all three members of the Trinity. So Jesus is speaking, so you'd agree that he's in the passage, right? Because he's the one that's speaking. Would you guys all agree with that? All right. And then he mentions, he talks about how he's going to go talk to God the Father about sending who? The Holy Spirit, our advocate, our come alongside her. That word advocate means paraclete. So we see that there's three members of the Trinity, and we need to understand that, that God is one, but three parts at the same time. Now, it's one of the great mysteries of God that no human being is going to fully understand until we're actually in heaven and, and, and understand it fully for ourselves. Uh, but we can begin to understand portions of it. Here's one way to think about it is, is that the, the, the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are each individually separate, but they're never separated. They're individually separate, but they're never separated. If we look at this Venn diagram, we'll see that God is all three but he's also three distinct people, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So when we think about the Trinity, we need to understand that he is, everyone is God, but they're never separated from one another. We have to remember that part. And then Jesus and the Holy Spirit are actually submitted to the will of the Father. All throughout Scripture, you see that Jesus says, and also the, is said about the Holy Spirit, that neither one of them act on their own will, but only do the will of the Father. So we need to understand that in that way. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit's work in our life, we need to understand that that is from the will of God. The Holy Spirit wouldn't lead us to do something that doesn't line up with God's Word. That's really important as we talk about being led by the Holy Spirit. It needs to line up with God's Word or it wasn't from Him. 
So that's what it says about God. Let's talk about what it says about us. There's a couple of things here that it says about us. The first one is, this first line, it says, if you love me, keep my commands. You know, a lot of times we think about obedience as like behavior modification. I mean, a lot of us leave church on Sunday and go, man, I got to do better this week. This was a bad week last week. I got to just be a better person when we leave. Anyone ever think that? Like you just got to do better, be a better person? Yeah. So there's some truth to that. But what's the motivation behind being a better person, right? And we're going to talk about the power to, to change in a little bit. Uh, but the motivation behind that is very clear here. That you see us living in a way that honors God, that follows the things that Jesus has shown us and taught us, that is a way to love Jesus back. He came, to lo he came and loved us unconditionally by dying on the cross for our sins, giving himself up for us. He did that as an act of love. The way we love him back is that we honor Him in that relationship uh, by living in a way that honors Him. So, so that's what that obedience means, is, is that it's an act of love. Now, I don't know about you, but it makes me feel a lot better that I'm not just trying to follow some rules, that I'm, that I'm acting in a loving way towards God uh, to honor Him. And, and don't forget those first and second greatest commandments that sum up all the others is to what? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. You see, we express that through those things. So, so keep that part in mind. Another part is, is that it tells us that the Holy Spirit is going to live with us and in us. Every person who's given their life to Christ Jesus as their Lord and Savior is the actual dwelling place or temple of the Holy Spirit. The living God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, comes and makes a dwelling place, makes a home in your life, paired up with your soul, makes a dwelling place in you. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, if you go and look, lived in the temple. And in fact, you had to be, if you were a priest, you had to be ceremonially clean and to, to just be able to go into the outer sanctum of the temple. Now, those priests back then, they wore robes that had bells at the bottom of them, and they had a rope tied around their ankle, and the rope went outside the temple. Now, maybe you're wondering why. It's because if, they, if the person outside the temple stopped hearing the bells ring, they knew that the priest had gone in, was not ceremonial clean, and was struck and dead by the holiness of God and had to be dragged out by his ankle. Kind of gruesome, but it's true. You can go read about it. Uh, but that's really true. But here's the thing. If you remember last week, I talked about the fact that Jesus lived a perfect life and gave us the credit. Well, that's really vital in what we're learning about today because Jesus lived a perfect life and that righteousness of Christ Jesus, that perfection has been credited to us. Now we're washed clean, so much so to the place that we can now be the temple of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us because God no longer sees the ugliness and sin in our life. He sees the perfection of Jesus. That's pretty awesome, no? Amen. But He dwells in us, and that's really important. But why does it matter? That's that next question. Why does it matter that we're the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit? You know why? Because a lot of us, we tend to live our life feeling powerless or we live our life powerless itself. So we've been saved and redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, yet we go out into the world and we still feel powerless. We often even begin to believe that we're powerless and we live in such a way that we're not uh, displaying all the power and the wonderful righteousness of God and all of His fruits because we haven't actually been embracing the wonderful, powerful work of the Holy Spirit in our life. That's why it's important. But the first thing we have to ask ourselves before we get to this place of talking about how can we have more of the power of the Holy Spirit, do we believe what it is that the Word of God has to say. Well, when you're studying at home through this method or in your community group, we have to come to that place of belief. We have to ask ourselves a question. Do I really believe all of these things? Do I believe all of the reasons why I need a Savior, that Jesus was a Savior? Do I believe that I'm clean before God, 100% and holy, and the Holy Spirit dwells in me? Do I believe that? Now, here's the thing. It might be your first step of belief here today to accept those things, but that's what we call faith. It's to trust just enough to take that first step 
It, it might be your next step. It might be your 400th step that you take here today. But we need to answer that question, do I believe this? And if we believe this, then we have to ask, well, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for me? If I believe all of these things to be true, what does it mean for me? Well, what it means for us is, is that God has paid the ultimate price to be in relationship with us. He's given us the Holy Spirit, and He wants us to grow in that relationship. He wants to grow in the power of the Holy Spirit in our life and no longer be powerless. You guys buying what I'm selling so far? Because He wants you to be filled with His power and no longer be powerless against all the things in this world. And there's something that we need to do to, to do that. And that brings us to the what will I do? How will I respond? And there's three C's that I have for you. And the three C's are this. We need to first commit. And then we need to cultivate. And then we need to cooperate. And if you're taking notes, write those down. You can go back and watch it online, of course, afterwards. But we need to commit, we need to cultivate, and we need to cooperate. And now maybe you're here in the room and, and you enjoy church. You've been coming to church. You're like, wow, I really feel great when I come to church. But then Monday, I feel terrible again. I don't, I don't feel the presence of God like I did on Sunday when I was in the room singing all those great songs and, and, and listening to the message and all those things. I don't feel it kind of during the week. Or maybe you like the culture of church but there's still kind of something that's missing in your life. You've been going out and trying to do better, trying to apply the things even that have been preached about on a weekend, but you still feel like you're trying and failing and something's missing. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to assume that I'm talking in the right room. The part that is missing is, is that we need to commit our lives to Christ Jesus. We're committing to a relationship like we would a marriage to covenant with Him, to give our life to Him. That's that first part is that we need to then make Him our Lord and our Savior. And if you haven't done that, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that at the end of the service today, and then invite you to take communion afterwards with us to celebrate your new union with God. But the first thing we need to do is commit for the first time. But then here's the part I think we miss a lot of times for those that have already committed. We, we don't get up every morning and commit our day, commit our life, our actions, our thoughts, our attitudes to God Almighty, to committing to that relationship with Jesus. But the Scripture says is that if we love Him, we'll obey His commands. That's a commitment that we're making to God. And then we know that that begins to do the next thing, and that's cultivate that relationship. We, if we follow it as a set of rules or a set of beliefs, and we kind of leave it there, and we miss the fact that, that we are supposed to be cultivating this relationship, uh, it'll feel like God is distant from us when He's actually present with us. And so when we think about that cultivation piece, we need to pursue the Holy Spirit. So if you are a young uh, guy or girl and you have a romantic interest in another person, what do you do with that person? You pursue them, do you not? Unless you're going to be all like the strong silent type, right? Like my boy Sean over here. He's like, I just kind of wait for him to come to me. But that's how Christine said it went down. But anyways, um, sorry. I, I pick on people in the congregation. So if you're new with us online, I'll pick on you later. But either way, um, the truth is, is that if it's a relationship, we want to pursue that relationship, right? If you're a parent or a friend, we, we have to pursue that relationship, right? Um, and when we think about the Holy Spirit, He is the active member of the, of the Trinity with us here on earth, and we need to pursue that relationship with Him. That means we need to actively be working with uh, Him and seeking Him out in all areas of our life. But there's things that get in the way. Just like in a human relationship, there's things that get in the way of our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I got four uns for you that get in the way of our relationship with the Holy Spirit. And here they are. The first one is, is unrepentant sin. Unrepentant sin. You know, if me and you are friends, and, and, and well, you are friends, but if we're like hangout buddies, let's just say for a minute, uh, and, and, and I've, I, I've been sinning in my life, and, and it's been against you, and I'm unrepentant of that. I haven't sought forgiveness for that. I haven't confessed that to you. Would that not hinder our friendship? Would that hinder our friendship? That would hinder our friendship. But it's no different with the Holy Spirit. And the difference with a human thing is, is you might be able to hide your sin from a human being, but nothing is hidden from God. So he knows all things. He already knows the unrepentant sin in our life, yet we continue to live 
in the sin. We don't want to repent or turn from it. We just continue to do it. Maybe other people don't know about it, but the Holy Spirit always knows about it, and it hinders the depth of our relationship to Him. And if we're looking for the Holy Spirit to do a work in our life, to fill us with His power, and we're living in unrepentant sin, we've got it all wrong. We've got to till up the soil of the garden and break up that hardened ground and root out the weeds before we can be planted in those seeds of the Holy Spirit. But here's the best part. The Holy Spirit will help you also in that repentance. He's going to give you the power to call it what it is and to come out from darkness and into the light and he wants to nurture that relationship. He's waiting with arms wide open. He already knows. He's just waiting for you to admit it. Unrepentant sin. The next on I have is unforgiveness. Scripture tells us that unforgiveness, it really grieves the Holy Spirit because as followers of Christ Jesus, we're to live in a place of forgiveness. A lot of us have been hurt by other people. How many people in this room have been hurt by somebody in your life? But you know what forgiveness is for? It's for more for the person who's been hurt than it is for the person who hurt. And God calls us to live in a place of forgiveness, uh, even if the other person doesn't really deserve it. But that unforgiveness that goes on in our life, it's a root of bitterness, and it can be kind of out there. And right now, gosh, we see it all over in our world, in our society, on social media, we are living in a place of unforgiveness. Many of us, as followers of Jesus, we, we're living in a place of unforgiveness. We're holding out bitterness and hatred towards different people and groups of people, uh, as opposed to loving them the way Christ Jesus does and, and forgiving them, understanding that they don't know not what they do, but we live in this place where we're holding bitterness against them, and God has called us to forgive them and show love to them the way He does. But that unforgiveness... Whether we're talking about a human being that we're in relationship with, or we're talking about uh, kind of a, a group of people in the society, whatever the case may be, unforgiveness in our life will hinder us from a close relationship with the Holy Spirit. The next one is unreconciled conflict. Now, it might sound different. It might sound the same as, as unforgiveness, but it is a little different. We'll, 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 what's your first name again? Brayden, all right, me and you are going to be friends here for a minute, all right? Brayden, so if me and you have a conflict, and, and, and I, I, let's say I did something to you that made you angry, and then we couldn't agree on it, so I just said, hey, we're going to agree to disagree. Well, that's a conflict we had, but it's not resolved. We just kind of let it be what it was. It's, it's an unresolved conflict. What Scripture tells us is, is that if we don't do everything in our part to live at peace with one another, that our requirement is to live at peace with one another as much as it depends on us. If we don't do that, both of us, then we actually grieve the Holy Spirit. He grieves that relationship because he's a spirit of unity. And when there's unresolved conflict, it's disunity. And we hinder our relationship with the Holy Spirit. In fact, if you look at the message translation, it says we throw a wet blanket on the Holy Spirit's fire. What? Are you kidding me? Who wants to have the Holy Spirit's fire just crazy in their life? Just just going nuts and overflowing with the fruits of the Spirit. We want that, right? But yet we let these uns in our life take over, don't we? Uh, and, and when we do that, we throw a wet blanket on the Holy Spirit fire. I don't want to do that. Thank you, my friend. The last one is this, unbelief. And maybe you didn't see this one coming, but the truth is a lot of times we get ourselves in this place of being uncertain about God uncertain about the work of the Holy Spirit. We have unbelief about His reality or His work in our life. And what we do by that is, is we allow that, that narrative to run in our life. We allow that unbelief and think, oh, you know what, I'm just going to go live this way because I'm not even sure if any of that is true. But we shortchange ourselves because God wants us to continue to pursue Him. No one in this room, no one in this world fully understands the full work of God and who He is. It's a pursuit in our whole life to grow in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. I think about the man in the Bible who Jesus healed his son, and he says, I do believe, but help me in my unbelief. You can come to God and say, God, help me in my unbelief. We need to pursue God in those things. But the truth is, is that many of us, we, we set out and we, we kind of leave the Holy Spirit at home. Some of us would say, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing this for God. I'm, I'm Roberto's killer on the drums. He's doing it for the Lord. No, actually, he's not doing it for the Lord. He's doing it with the Lord. You see, if the Holy Spirit is with us and in us, it means that everything we do in life, we do with God. 
We are in a marriage with the Holy Spirit. Whether your spouse is saved or not, you are in that marriage with the Holy Spirit. He lives in you and with you. You're not doing it for God. You're doing it with God. we got to get that right if we begin to have that perspective that God is with us wherever we go and in anything we do. It really changes our perspective on things, doesn't it? Every challenge we face, we know that we go into it with the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're not just putting a prayer on it and asking God to bless it. We're doing it with God. Your marriage, your workplace. When we read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit actually interprets the Word of God for us. If we go to the Word of God and don't invite the Holy Spirit in to interpret His Word, we leave it short. But we have to invite Him to read His Word with us. We get to read the Word of God with the author of the Word of God. That is pretty awesome. We can worship in spirit and in truth. That means that when we come into this place to worship, we're going to close with a worship song here today and invite you to do that. Invite the Holy Spirit to come to worship with you like you'd invite a friend to come to worship with you. Holy Spirit, come and worship with me and in me as I worship God the Father here today. It changes everything in our life. We get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in such a magnificent way when we do that. How many people here got life all figured out? Anybody at home? Life all figured out? You got it all figured out. You know what's going to happen next. You got all wisdom. It's cool, man. No worries at all in life. You know how everything's going to turn out. Anybody? You got, we'll talk after church. I got to take some notes. Hey, you ever been in that place where you pray and you don't even know what to pray for? Life is just so hard. You don't know what to pray for. You're in a dull place in your, in your, in, in your relationship with the Lord. Whatever the case may be, but we come to Him, the Holy Spirit is in us. And when we're, when we're doing that job to cultivate the Holy Spirit's relationship in our life like a good friend or our spouse or someone that's really close with us, the Holy Spirit knows us, knows the attitudes of our heart. And not only does He pray with us, He prays for us. Now, if I texted you and said, hey, I'm praying for you this week, you'd probably feel pretty good, right? Like, hey, thanks, I appreciate that prayer. Some people think my prayers are more powerful than yours are, but that's just not true. We're all equal in our prayer life. But either way, hey, guess who's always praying for you when we invite Him to do so? The Holy Spirit is in you and with you, and He advocates to the Father on your behalf, and He prays for the things that you yourself don't even know what to pray for. You want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Invite Him into your time with Him. Invite Him into your workplace. Invite Him into your relationships. Invite Him into your reading of the Word. Invite Him into all that you do. And here's the last one. Then cooperate with it. We can't ask the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and for all His wisdom and then say, oh, that's a good idea, but I think I'm going to do my own thing. We can't do that. He wants us to willingly walk and cooperate with him you know a lot of us dream up our own plans and then just ask the holy spirit to empower us to do it we we, we want to do all of these things and say okay god can you bless it can you give us the empowerment you tell us that you'll fill us with your power that's actually not what scripture says scripture actually tells us that his power comes in us so we can do his work not that we can do our work but when we come and yield to Him and cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit, those convictions about unforgiveness, about unrepentant sin, about the relationships we should be in, the prompting of the Holy Spirit to go and do and act the way that He wants for the sake of other people that we've been talking about for week after week, that's all a leading of the Holy Spirit, but we can't deny it. When we think about His calling on our life, what is He calling us to? We have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We hope that you've been blessed by the service. If you don't have a church home, we would love for you to consider being a part of Christ Community Church. And you can connect with us by going to cccfamily.com. Let us know that you've been uh, joining us for church. You can fill out the online connect card there. Give us your information. We can help you take the next step. If you have a prayer concern that you'd like our prayer teams to pray about, you can do that as well. If you'd like to support the ministry here at Christ Community Church, you can also give online at cccfamily.com and we appreciate all that God is doing in and through each and every one of you. Hey, thanks again for joining us this week. We look forward to seeing you again soon, either online or in person. God bless you.